Hello, and welcome to another video. This is Tech Bismo, as you can tell because you're here. Um, and I've been gone for three months. So today I just have a little bit of an update video. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be installing Linux Mint Cinnamon uh, 18 point, or no, sorry, 19.3 on my HP NVX 360 in this video. While I'm going to be talking a little bit about updates and, you know, just just random stuff because, you know, I was, uh, I was thinking of ideas, you know, I've actually been writing a bunch of scripts for my videos. I have an HP NV X360 review coming up, you know, one of the, my main videos. That's, that's the only one though, guys, I'm going to be telling you guys about. Hopefully I can get the NV X360, you know, the review of this actual computer out sometime this month or sometime next month. We'll just see how that goes. But, you know, uh, we'll see. I, I'll see if I can talk a little bit about uh, what happened with my NVX360 and why I've been gone and just a bunch of random stuff. You guys can tell, like many of my other, you know, desk videos, uh, we have crappy lighting behind me. We have a crappy desk setup. You know, I've just got random CPUs here um, from some computers that I'm refurbishing and selling. We've got an HP Omni 220 PC back here. This is an all-in-one. Hopefully we can make a future video on that. I actually cut a hole in the back of this, placed an Intel stock cooler on the CPU, which actually does improve the CPU performance and the cooling very significantly. Uh, you guys might be surprised, or you might not be surprised because it's an all-in-one. By default, come with crappy cooling. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and uh, head over to the HP NVX 360 and just install Linux Mint. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, why I've been gone. I don't really have a clear-cut, you know, excuse for, you know, the reasons I've been gone. But I'm just going to tell you, you know, what's happened while I've gone, basically. So let's, uh, let's open up my computer right over here. We're going to go ahead and shut it down so that we can go ahead and do this um, Linux Mint installation process. <clears throat> I have installed Linux Mint and uh, actually other Linux distributions on this computer before. Um, that was that was a while ago. It's actually been a while um, since I've actually done a Linux install on this computer, which this is my main laptop. This is my daily driver computer currently. Um, this uh, yeah, this is my main computer, and I have no clue, you know, absolutely no idea why I just shut this because I need it open. Um, but you know what? We're gonna grab the flash drive, which this one contains Linux Mint, as you guys would probably guess. Let's just get started with the installation. So as I said, this is just a uh, SanDisk. Um, so we're going to throw this in the machine. Um, this is shut down now, so we'll just stick that in the USB port on the side of the laptop. Um, something that I've actually probably mentioned before, I think I mentioned this when I had back when I had my Dell Latitude E6430 computer. Um, whenever I have, you know, universal serial devices connected to my computer, I always connect the ones that are frequently, you know, disconnected and reconnected. I always connect those in the replaceable ports. So this, uh, port, this USB port on the, uh, left side of the NVX360 actually is the replaceable one that's on, you know, on a separate daughter board. And then this one where I have my mouse, which I never disconnect, uh, this one's on the one that's actually soldered to the motherboard. Um, yeah, that's just, that's just how I like to do it because I like to, you know, I like the ports that I frequently, you know, that are frequently going through a lot of stress, you know, having a lot of stress on the port. I like to be, I like to have replaceable just in case they die. And I've actually never had one die before, but enough about that. Let's, uh, power this guy up. Um, we're going to go ahead and boot up to BIOS because that's what we're going to have to do. Uh, in order to, you know, uh, boot up the system via the USB flash drive. So what does that say? That says boot device options, F9. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's just select our USB flash drive. You actually can see right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I did actually have an Ubuntu partition on here quite a while ago, uh, but that partition is deleted. Um, it's just got the bootloader installed currently. So uh, let's go ahead and select our SanDisk and boot up the system without any error, hopefully. So yes, we do have Linux Mint 19.3 on this flash drive, Linux Mint 19.3 Cinnamon. We, uh, um, I guess that brings us to the subject, you know, why I've been gone for a while. Um, and yeah, I've been gone for approximately three months at this point. And 
there's not really a reason, as I said, not really a reason or an excuse to tell you guys that, you know, why I've been gone. It's just basically, I just didn't feel like making videos. <laughs> what other reason? Um, yeah, while I was gone, guys, uh, if you guys do remember Vim and Zoo, which, heck, if you don't, if you don't remember Vim and Zoo, go ahead and check out that video, wherever it is on the screen. <laughs> um, yeah, Vim and Zoo were my pets, my pet rats, which I bought two, which I got two years ago from a Craigslist seller. Um, yes, I bought my rats on Craigslist. Um, but, uh, the, the... Craigslist seller was very polite, and you know they were rat breeders, so they knew a lot about the rats. Um, but you know, I took the rats home. They were very sweet rats. And fast forward to two years later, or no, yeah, two almost two years later, uh, Zoo died uh, early in the morning on January something. It was, it was a, it was a Thursday, I think, and then uh. Maybe a Tuesday. I, it doesn't matter. It was a Wednesday. I don't care. It doesn't matter. But yeah, Zoo, which was the one with the small little tiny eyes, um, he died that morning or that evening. I'm not sure. But yeah, um, after Zoo died, you know, it was really sad. But I could tell Vim, a.k.a. Linus, you know, <laughs> um, he... It was actually moving super slow, you know, and he felt kind of cold, which, you know, I was, I was sad that morning that Zoo had died, so I was very skeptical that Vim might have died right after, which, fast forward to the end of that, that school day, yes, Vim had passed away, which, it, it was kind of happy, though, because, like, when I picked him up, when I got home, he was still moving around a little bit, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't walking, I apologize, but he was... He was breathing and it, he was blinking and, uh, you know, he would refuse to eat his food. So that's one of the things that just made me, you know, feel that that Vim wasn't going to make it, you know, along with the zoo. So, uh, anyways, what was I saying? So yeah, right when I got home from school, I was holding Vim for like 30 minutes and then he passed away while I was holding him. So it was very sad, but, you know, it's <laughs> kind of nice to think that, you know, Vim waited for me to get home before he died. You know, he he was holding on a little longer, I guess I could say. Um, yeah, uh, the rats you guys, I guess, knew and loved. Uh, yep, they're gone. But I do have a video upcoming about my new rats, which their names are Flapjack and Moose. Yes, I have a video coming probably right after this one uh, on Flapjack and Moose, uh, the new the new rats. I know, their names are kind of terrible. But, uh, oh no, it's giving me that um, erase disk with and install Linux Mint uh, thing, so I actually have to reboot the system and disable Secure Boot and yeah, just basically go from there. I think I should be good. I was a little bit loud. Alright, so security. This is what we need to disable... Where is it? Oh no, it's in configuration, isn't it? Boot options. Here it is. Secure boot. That is currently enabled. Disable that, because that is basically mandatory if you want to dual boot your operating system, your Windows 10 operating system with Linux, or any operating system for that matter. Um, yeah, it always gives me the secure boot thing on this computer. All right, we need to enter this code, so 2071, enter. And there we go. So now we can boot up with the SanDisk flash drive. And we should be good to go from there. So let's start the Linux Mint boot. Give that a few seconds. Um, 
So yeah, what else have I been doing while I was gone? So yes, my rats passed away. I did get new rats. Um, eBay. eBay people are stupid. Really, really stupid. As a matter of fact, so stupid. I went to go... I'm trying to think of a way to not live. I want to go start that bathtub, drop that toaster in there, and plug it into a... No, 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 never mind. Because if it was plugged into a GFCI, then I'd be safe. Anyways. Uh... Yeah, eBay people are really stupid, and I don't really know how to describe how stupid, but I'm going to have an upcoming video about how stupid, so just stay tuned for that. I don't want to talk about it right now because I'm super angry about that stupid eBay buyer. Um, now we should be able to install Linux Mint, so... <clears throat> Let's continue. Yes, English US. Go to our network. Alrighty, click continue. Install third party software. Yep, we're not we're no longer getting that secure boot disabling thing. So we should be good. We've run into another issue. I forgot to disable flippin' bitlocker on the NVMe SSD. Thanks, Windows. They had to go and enable flippin' NVMe encryption, which what consumer is gonna encrypt their NVMe drive? Well, technically, there's a lot of people who would. Wait, ho, ho, whoa, whoa, whoa. Enter recovery key for this drive. We need to go back and disable secure boot. And then we can boot up into Windows and disable BitLocker encryption. And then we can finally disable secure boot again and boot up to the flash drive. So I'm going to fast forward and uh, fix this issue. Why did I boot? <laughs> All right, we got to. Turn off, and turn off. And now decryption is in progress. How long is this going to take? Oh, it's done. Shut her down. Put back in the flash drive. Disable secure boot. Oh my gosh. Okay. <clears throat> now that we're finally done with that, we can finally install Linux. I 
Okay, install Linux Mint alongside Windows Boot Manager. Continue. And we're finally in business. We are finally installing Linux Mint Cinnamon 19.3 on my HP Envy X360 while dual booting. We are dual booting uh, Windows 10 with Linux. Well, guys, my plan originally was to install Linux Mint um, and then, you know, talk a little bit about what I've been doing while I was gone during the installation. However, that obviously backfired just, just a little bit. So we're probably just going to go ahead and end this video here. I will let you guys know how the installation went in the, I don't know, the description of this video. Um, but yeah, guys, that is pretty much it. That is what I've been doing lately. And yeah, there's just, uh, it was supposed to be a quick tutorial, but a long tutorial on how to dual boot Linux Mint and Windows Boot Manager. There are the updates from TechBizmo and why I've been gone for a while or just what I've been doing while I've been gone for so long. Um, hopefully I have completely uh, resumed making videos on this YouTube channel starting today. Um, by that I mean I hope I start uploading videos to my YouTube channel, you know, periodically. So, uh... Yeah, we'll see how that goes, guys. Uh, wish me luck on the installation also. Looks like it's going fine. And Linux Mint installations rarely ever go bad, unless I have a corrupted ISO. Anyways, that's enough. That's for a different video. Uh, as I said, guys, uh, thank you guys very, very much for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one.